Hey guys, somebody posted a question uh, on the clip that I put up of my JT Junior, um, which is my own amp, built using our kind of Friedman Mini style inspired uh, PCB, which can do you know a range of those kind of different Mini style amps, um, either in cathode bias or fixed bias mode. And the question was actually about that: Is there a difference in sound between the cathode bias and fixed bias? Um, the cathode bias is there to, you know, really set up for doing EL84 um, style amp, which is actually how Friedman does all those mini, the mini amps that he has. Um, you know, the J, JJ Junior, uh, you know, Pink Taco, um, Dirty Shirley Mini, and so on. They all use that kind of same um, EL84 style power amp cathode bias setup. I actually built my amp with 66 tubes, right? So I actually did it in fixed bias mode. And in fixed bias, the 6v6 tubes using the JJ6v6s here, it'll push out about 25 watts clean power. Um, but I implemented a switch on the rear, which can go between fixed and cathode bias. So uh, given the question that was posted, I thought that um, we could do a clip um, and flick between the two modes and uh, check out what the difference is between the sound for the, in the power section. So to do that, I'm running into my Helix rack, which is kind of behind me in this um, shelf over here. And I'll just play like a riff into the looper, using that, using the Helix rack as a, as a looper. The loop's going straight into the front end of this amp and, and into Logic. And we'll go through, you know, uh, we'll try that with uh, obviously the clean channel, the simple clean on this amp and then into into the dirty modes uh, as well. Um, see what happens, all right. Okay, and then we'll bring up the volume. We'll bring up the volume in the power stage, and uh, so we're driving the power amp harder. See what happens. So this is fixed mode. Bring this down. Sections working harder. Um, let's get the levels right. Okay, so master's up at about um, three o'clock, and we will do uh, fixed bias first. Thank you. 
cathode. So there we have it guys, um, fixed bias versus cathode bias and uh, all in the same amp, right? So I think quite a, quite a useful test in terms of comparing the difference in tone and feel. Um, everything else is equal on the amp, we're just flicking between the fixed bias mode and cathode bias mode. So for me, um, as, you, as you really turn up the master volume and you really start to push the power amp, you can really start to hear the difference. Um, and it feels different too, right? The cathode bias really starts to sag, particularly kind of in the, ba in the bass notes, whereas the, uh, the fixed bias tends to, you know, um, stay reasonably firm and, um, you know, still got that, got that push there even, even when, you start to, when you start to crank it. So, you know, it's horses for courses. It depends on, on the tone you're going for and, and the feel uh, that you're going for. Um, part two of this clip is a little bit about the theory um, what fixed bias and cathode bias actually is and um, we'll finish off with um, a quick look at the difference in the power output between fixed and cathode as well so if you just want to hear the tones then now's probably a good time to leave the video if you want to understand a bit more about the difference in terms of the, the technical aspects then um, uh, I suggest you continue watching cheers okay if you've ever wondered uh, what the difference is between a fixed bias and cathode bias tube amp, I will attempt to explain it using the schematic. This is from, this is actually the schematic for the mini uh, PCB uh, that we have. Um, build your own amp with this PCB, and as demonstrated in the earlier part of this clip, I'll be switching between cathode bias and fixed bias. And when you build, if you were to build an amp using this board, you could just choose one or the other. All right? You don't need to make it switchable, but the option is there because the PCB supports both. Um, this is the switch here, All right? switching between cathode and fixed bias. So we'll talk about fixed bias first, and then we'll talk about cathode bias second. Right? So this refers to how you set up the bias on the power tubes. So here's my two 6v6s here. Um, and we'll talk about the plate and the cathode right so the plate is where you you would put the uh the high voltage line so it's in this amp it's about 400 volts dc um, and when we talk about the bias what we're really talking about is how we set up the cathode um, and this is the grid right so the grid controls the flow of current through the tube so in a fixed bias amp down here is where you set it up so you have a bias voltage that comes in, goes through this diode, it's AC when it comes in here. This little setup here sets it up into a negative DC voltage. This symbol here is a variable resistor. This is your bias adjustment. So if you've ever been inside an amp and adjusted your own bias using a little trim pot um, or similar, this is what you're actually doing. You're adjusting the negative DC voltage that comes in on this bias line. Comes along here. When the switch is set in fixed bias mode, which is as it's um, drawn here at the moment, this negative bias voltage comes along here and is set right here, right on these, um, and it sets a negative voltage on the grid of the power tube. This controls the current flow. If you have no negative voltage on here, 
and you set this up with the cathodes um, set to ground, which they are here. All right, so the cathodes come along here, and you can see the switch sets them to ground here. So in a fixed bias amp, you'll have your cathode grounded, and you'll have a negative voltage on your grid. If you don't have a negative voltage, that's handy red plate. All right, so you turn the amp on, the thing, the tubes will grow red glow red because you've got nothing controlling the current flow from the plate to the cathode. Um, never a good idea. All right, so uh, negative voltage here, it's adjusted with this variable resistor here. Your cathodes are set to ground. All right, um, that's fixed bias. All right, so you adjust it here to get the amount of current flow through the tube at the right level. Um, you can use any the available bias calculators to figure that out. Um, no trouble at all. When we switch over to cathode bias, right, so you can imagine this switch here, this pole here is going to move across to this one, and this one is going to move up to here. It's a double pole, double throw switch. All right, so it, it switches two, two poles simultaneously. Um, what happens now is that um, the grid on the grids here, you're actually going to set them to ground, right? So rather than the negative voltage that we had in fixed bias, these now come down here, and you can see when this is switches in the up position and the cathode bias position, they're set to ground, right? Um, and the cathodes change. So the, in fixed bias, the cathode was set to ground. When we go to cathode bias, this line here, this switches up, and the cathodes now go through this cathode resistor, all right, before it goes to ground. What happens here is you get a you get a, a, a voltage drop across this resistor. So in um, in my amp um, in the uh, J uh, JJ Junior, um, this uh, when it's in cathode bias mode. As I said, I've got about 400 volts plate voltage here, and I'm actually um, going through what I ended up with a 330 ohm 10 watt resistor. You've got to choose the end resistance of this uh, resistor here to get your uh, dissipation correct, right, in cathode bias mode, so it's not running too hot. You get pretty close to 100% dissipation um, in cathode bias mode. And uh, the voltage as measured here is 28.3 volts. So this is how you get the bias differential, right? So in fixed bias mode, if these are set to ground, cathodes at ground, and this is 400 volts at the plate, you need a negative voltage on the grid to stop the tube from running away. In cathode bias mode, you still got your 400 volts here. If this is ground, right, because it will be in cathode bias mode, it'll be a ground voltage here, DC. You need to set your cathode to be at a higher voltage than the grid, otherwise, again, the tube will run away. And in cathode bias mode, you do that easily, simply by this resistor here, because you get um, a voltage uh, differential happening across this resistor as the current flows through it. And with 400 volts on the plate, and in, in my amp, 28 volts here, it's enough of a differential with the 28 volts on the cathode and the grid being at ground, you know, zero volts, um, it keeps the tubes biased correctly. Okay, um, hopefully that helped in some way. <laughs> Just a quick comment about the output power difference between fixed bias and cathode bias mode. You can see on the screen here, I've got a screenshot of my uh, oscilloscope, which is measuring uh, clean output at speaker jack. All right, so the amp is running into an 8 ohm resistive load, um, and I've got a sine wave running into the front end of the amp, um, which is set at about the same um, you know, magnitude as the guitar pickup. And I'm running just into the clean channel here, right? So you don't want any gain in the preamp. Keep the preamp clean. And then I'm winding up the master volume and checking the scope, getting to the point where that waveform starts to distort. And you're getting, you know, 
power section clipping and you bring it back bring it back just a touch until you know the sine wave looks pretty clean um, as it is on uh, that picture right there and so this is fixed bias mode we're measuring 38.4 volts peak to peak which is 23 watts of clean RMS power now if we move to cathode bias and you can see we've measured 33.2 volts it's 17 watts all right so 23 watts in fixed bias 17 watts cathode bias same amp same power same power transformer um, and so on so the difference between the two is six watts